Hi everyone, I'm Deborah Forth from Deborah Darling Face Original Art and Collectibles, and today I wanted to teach you how to make this real shell hermit crab. And if you don't have any real shells available, this one with a fake shell that you can do on your own. That's the only difference in this tutorial, and we're gonna show you how to do that in just a sec. So I would say that this is a beginner tutorial uh, for this clay hermit crab, and you're only gonna need a few items. Most likely, if you have been working with polymer clay, you do have these items with you, and if not, I will leave links below for where I have found those items. All right, first thing you're gonna need is liquid Sculpey, formerly known as Bake and Bond. I like to use translucent as more of a glue or an adhesive, but I'm using things like these real shells. Then you need, if you have one, one of your shells, some polymer clay. This is uh, this is Sculpey Primo, and granite, I believe. So that'll give us some texture when making our own shell if you don't have your own. And then some regular Sculpey Primo. Some wire, and these are gonna be for the little antenna there. And some rhinestones. Now this is just craft wire that I had laying around. So I like to use these, they're little jewels. And they came in an acrylic nail designer kit. So that's really cool, and I'll leave links to um, the things that I think maybe might be a little harder to find or you're not sure of uh, in the comments below. Now before we go on and make our own shell, I want to make sure I mentioned a couple things. We will need a dotting tool. Now that's something that has like these little balls at the end. A lot of people use them for mandalas. And then you also need a sharp pointy tool. And you can either use something like that that has the handle or like an X-Acto or I just like this little blade. So let's get into making our own shell. So here is the real shell and then here is the crab that I've made that is making a shell that we made ourselves. It's very cute. It doesn't look too much different, but you know. So yeah, I just took a ball of clay. It's probably the size of the shell, so about I don't know, mini gumball size. And then you're gonna wanna make a snake of clay. So a snake is when you just roll it out into like a long noodle. But in this case, we're gonna taper it at the end. I'm working on parchment paper here. And then I just put my hand here to hold it down a little bit. But we're gonna just make a snake of clay and taper it down at one end. And you do that by pressing. So this actually might, might be great. I think this is only what, this is about three inches. And we want that wider end because we're going to make it a hole because, you know, he lives in the shell. And then the pointy end, let's make that a little bit more pointy. And then start just rolling it on itself. But instead of keeping it even, see if I were to keep it even, it would just be a big fat cinnamon roll. We don't want that. We want a shell. So as you're rolling it, taper it down. Don't go on the whole thing. Maybe put it towards the middle of where that other. Yeah, and then if you need um, help making it like a taper, just put it on your pinky like an acorn hat and then roll it around like that. And this is where our dotting tool comes in. I just have one size just in case you don't have many. For this, I would usually use something bigger. You can use your finger as well if you trust that. But you really just wanna kind of indent and then massage it around and making that hole and then we'll blend you can just take your finger and blend it right in to that bottom layer and that's going to secure that but also make your little shell and then what you can do also because these shells real ones have texture you know they have some grit we're going to do some of the texture and i'm going to do that with my sharp pointy tool when you look at a shell, they kind of go in a spiral. So just follow the curve. If you need to, you pick it up and actually roll your tool. And that's going to show up just really slightly. Kind of give it a little bit more character. And if you think it's a little too much, you can always take your finger and smooth that. Make sure if you choose, you don't have to do this at all, but if you choose to, 
make sure you do the whole thing. We don't want to bake this yet. We want to set this aside. And now we're going to make our actual hermit crab part. Now for the fun part, the crab. So you wanna make sure your clay is conditioned. I've run mine through a pasta machine a few times. Just wanna get the air bubbles out and all that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what we did with the shell and make a snake. But this time we're not gonna taper it at the end. This time we're not gonna make it thinner at one end. We're gonna make it even. Uh, I think it's easier to use in smaller chunks because we want this to be really thin if you look at the crab that i did you'll see these are pretty small so you want your beginning applying pressure evenly from side to side making sure that's the same size i'm gonna flip it so what we need is let's see so we see our crab has six legs two eyes so six times three that's 18 and then plus two so 20 we're gonna end up with 20 separate balls so this looks well, this looks pretty even I'm just gonna estimate so we need two eyes so those are gonna be the smaller parts so just so one two that's for our eyes and now I want those legs to be bigger balls so just to make them even one two three and you'll get a feel for it four five six and then the more that you do, the more you'll get a feel of where, and that one's clearly too small. But you can always combine that with another one that is too small. But you're gonna get a uniform cut just by finding your rhythm. And then I'm just taking my index finger on the side of the blade. Because if you do them all in a row, I'll show you. They pile up like that. You don't want that to happen. It's not the end all be all. You can usually pull them apart. So I'm doing all of these then. I'm going to roll each one into a ball, but it's going to be more shaped like a Tic Tac or a Minion, a fat sausage. So what was that in, if you were in biology, Cocobacillus. So a stubby rod, Cocobacillus. I think I failed that class, so don't take my word for it. So we've got these two small ones for our eyes. Just roll those between your fingers and then make the eyes longer. So you want those so the eyes are going to be, the eye sockets are going to be more like a grain of rice than a tic-tac. Yeah, so those are the eyes. Then I'm starting to do my tic-tac legs with each one of those. And I'm going to speed this up because I've got a lot to do and uh, we'll see you when those are done. Now that we have our little tic-tac shapes, we need to take six. So let's pick six because we need six pointy ends. So you don't have to re-roll them. I'm just gonna take that and then when you take that little tic-tac, just apply pressure to one end and you're gonna get that little point. And that's gonna be like its little claw. Yeah, you can roll that in between your fingers. Part of my dirty nails. And I'm an artist. So just do that six times. So now that we have our claws, we're gonna put our legs together. So that requires two of the tic-tac shapes and one of the little claws we just made put together. And when I say put together, you're literally just going to like squish them together. So you take your one tic-tac, you take another tic-tac, and then you just smush them. You smush them together and that's gonna create little shapes and joints and muscles and all that. And then you pick one of your claws and then you just push it on the end and then each one will have like a different angle no two are going to be alike and then when we place them all at the end you'll see how we can make their positioning a little bit differently too you want to do that another five times making six in a row so now we have our six legs two eyes but we still need to make those eyes have life give them character give them sockets. So I'm just gonna take that little grain of rice and then my dotting tool. If you don't have a dotting tool, the end of a pen would work, a pin, anything that's gonna really let you just, you just push that in, make a little indent with that, work a little round, make some room and do that again. And don't be afraid to hold on to it. That pressure, it's just gonna make it more of a cone shape. So little ice cream cone eyes. So yeah, then you have two of those. 
And I'm gonna take my liquid Sculpey, just put a little dot on my paper. I'm gonna take my dotting tool, and of course my rhinestones, so gonna have those out. And then something that's really cool that will come with your rhinestones if you purchase them, or even if you don't and you find them somewhere else, invest in something that's a wax pencil. You might even actually be able to use something for photos that's a wax pencil. It's gonna help pick up those jewels, keep them the right side up. I love a good tool. We haven't decided what color eyes they're gonna have. What do you think? I just have to be able to see if I can find two that are the same because I dumped them in the same package like we do when we are organized artists. You just take that same dotting tool, pick some of that liquid Sculpey, and that's just gonna help secure the rhinestone. And I have some um, iridescent mixed in with my red because then I know where to find them. You just wanna take your wax pencil and see how it picks up. And it's exactly the right way that I need it to be. And then you just pick up your eyeball, put that rhinestone in the socket we made, make our beautiful hermit crab eyeball, and then we will be able to put all of this together. Now sometimes they do slip around, but I was able to grab it. It's just really nice. I think it's better than tweezers. Tweezers don't always cooperate, stay the right way. Make sure you close, close these little caps or you will have a hard time finding all of those that was again. All right, so now we have to put it together. So I'm gonna really quick grab that real shell and then we'll make the base for that if you have a real one that you wanna work with. So I have my real shell right here. Let me see this opening. I've just cleaned out the sand as much as I could. You're never gonna really be able to get out all the sand from something that comes from the beach. This is from the beach right by my house. Don't worry, no hermit crabs were harmed. I think this was left behind a long time ago. It had made its way all the way to the freeway. So you take your real shell, your liquid Sculpey, just put some inside that little hole right there. You really wanna get that in some of those other places. Cause what you're gonna do, you're literally gonna just take the same color clay that you made all your limbs with. You're gonna make a ball. It doesn't even have to be a ball. It could be a piece of gum looking thing. Shove it right in there. Cause that's gonna give your clay, your legs and your eyeballs something to stick to. You just put that right inside there. And then I'm just smushing off any excess and smoothing that with my fingers. So you can be as messy or as neat as you like. So that's how we will attach our limbs to the real shell. And with the other one, this is clay. It's going to stick. You shouldn't need the liquid Sculpey at all for anything else from this point on. I am going to now, I want to do the real one. So the first thing we need to attach are those eyeballs. So I've got them right here. So you want to be toward the opening of the shell is. So we're just going to hold, press, and smooth. He's a little stubby, so he could stand to be longer. You can always redo these pieces if you're not happy with them. So hold, press, and smooth. And there, look, oh my goodness, we already have crab eyes. So here's where our wire comes into play. So you notice they have those antenna. I'm not sure what they're called. I have to look that up. I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna cut two similarly sized pieces and then give each one of those a little bit of a curve. And then we're gonna stick those into our clay. These are gonna move around a little bit even after it's baked. Let's just stick those in. There's our little feelers. He's just so cute and coming together. There you go. All right? And you can always trim those after. And then you take each leg, like, same as the eyeball. Put a little pressure there. And then depending on how you position them, this leg could be up or this leg could be going back. I want it to go back. So I'm going to press that. Smooth. Got that leg. And you can always position it. So you can position. Just be careful. Don't want to dislodge it. Oh, speak of the devil and he shall appear. Just like that, your leg might come apart. If you're over 30, that might be true in more ways than one. Smush that back together. Something that happens, you probably just didn't apply enough pressure to begin with. And even when you smush something, look, still looks good. Now let's do our other side. Push and smush. Push and smush, that's all it is. And if you work a little messy, don't worry, nobody's ever gonna see the underside. Except for when they're playing with your cute little crab. If somebody comes over and they're stressed out, you should be like, hold my crab. He loves you. He will take your worries away. 
And then our last little leg right back here. So yeah, when you look at the side, if you're not happy with the positioning, you can always change that, like this one, a little farther back. So very cute. All right, now we will bake this. Um, you would apply this in the same way. Fake shell, just like you see here. And adjust your antenna or your feelers before he goes in. Put that in to bake for about an hour, in the 275 or according to your clay's instruction. And that's it. Now you can have cute little crabs. And you can take them out to the beach or the forest or the woods or your lawn or anywhere you want and have a photo shoot, name them. Make every color of the rainbow. Let me know what you have done with this crab tutorial. Show me yours. You can follow me on Instagram at Deborah Darling Face. I'm on Etsy as well. Thanks so much. Bye.